Solarix is a science fiction first person horror game developed by Pulse Tense Games, featuring open ended levels for both combative and stealth focused playstyles. With influences taken from System Shock 2, Bioshock, and Dead Space to name a few, it is a game that combines old school sci fi horror with modern style and graphics. To that I say poppycock. Solarix may take influence from countless other competent games, but it lacks just that competency. It's a horribly unfinished, unenjoyable mess that is a constant chore from start to finish. Any semblance of horror or atmosphere the game might have garnered is purged by horrid gameplay and a muddled, confusing story. The story at its most basic form is that you're a space engineer fighting to stop a space virus that has wiped out the inhabitants of a space station. Virus, space engineer, amnesia, it's like they've made a cocktail out of a bunch of different features from other horror games. Like System Shock 2, the vast majority of character development comes from audio logs or text you find in computer terminals or around the environment. People driveling on and on about events that have long since passed. Sometimes these audio or text logs contain codes that you'll need to progress through the game, forcing you to listen to every little tidbit of useless info to find that one nugget of actual importance. Each chapter in the game puts you in a somewhat large area, usually full of enemies, often requiring you to find a keycard for the exit, along with completing other menial tasks you'd expect in a sci-fi horror game. You know, log into computer terminals, hack this or hack that, gain access to some sort of locked off area, etc. It's been done before and if you've played any sci-fi game the past decade, you've already done this a dozen times. Now the game reminds you frequently that you're an engineer, not a soldier, though it does put a gun in your hand quite early on. You're given a pistol which is supposed to kill enemies with a single headshot, and yet despite my best efforts, it always takes two, if not three shots to kill anyone, even when my crosshair is directly over their cranium. Now I'm not sure if this is a problem with the hit detection or because I'm just not hitting the right spot, but in a game where you've only ever got five or six bullets at any one time, this kind of thing just isn't acceptable. Later in the game you get a shotgun as well, which is both underpowered and unenjoyable, and ammo for both of these is so rare that you will hardly use either of them anyway. As a non-lethal alternative, you're given a weapon called a shocker, which is supposed to be able to knock enemies out if you hit them from behind, but it seldom works. Hitting enemies in the head is tricky, as most often they're patrolling back and forth, and the crawl speed is so incredibly slow, it's often easier to just outright avoid them, but mostly because half the time, the damn thing just doesn't work at all. On that note, stealth involves staying in the darkness, moving at a snail's pace, and literally crawling past enemies to remain hidden. Apparently, every single surface in the game makes the same amount of noise, so you have to perpetually remain crouched or else you're easily detected. And this is the entire game in a nutshell. It's just you crouching and sneaking past either a zombie type enemy or someone with a gun. They both function the same, all but oblivious to your presence as long as you stay crouched, and a small icon on the bottom left lets you know if you're in the light or shadow. Anyway, when you are detected, it's suddenly like you've got a neon sign above your head and enemies will chase after you relentlessly. In the case of enemies with guns, they can suddenly see and shoot you in the dark, and melee enemies will suitably give chase as well. Every time you get hit by a melee attack, the screen obnoxiously flies all over the place. The so-called lean button, which is more tilting head than leaning, is all but useless as well. In fact, let's take a moment to talk about the controls, shall we? Which are just abysmal. I've had countless times where I've just been stuck in place by some sort of invisible barrier, and this even happens to the AI as well. I'm almost excited about this. Seeing NPCs float in mid-air, for instance, is quite common, as is just seeing them stuck in a 3 or 4 frame animation loop where they cannot move. Then there's the visuals, which are borderline prehistoric. The frame rate goes all choppy at random points for no discernible reason, and it looks far too crappy to ever be justified for doing so. The modeling of weapons and items is like something from the last gen, and there's about 3 or 4 character models tops in the entire game. On top of all of this, the game uses a downright broken save system, forcing you to replay segments over and over. You'd expect a checkpoint after you complete a mission objective, but sometimes you don't get one at all. And there's just all these little problems that keep this game from being anything other than fodder, and that's without mentioning the countless bugs and other glitches. I mean, just look at this, will you? This is early access at best. How anyone could ever compare this to System Shock 2 and all those other games is just beyond me. In tone and theme at the very least, but even that is a stretch. There is no character customization, the levels are deceptively linear, there is no freedom to take in a combat or stealth approach, in fact you're all but forced into stealth the entire game due to the lack of ammo. 
you have a hacking tool which never runs out, which kind of makes you question why there's even a hacking tool in the first place. And lastly, there is no inventory management whatsoever. The storyline is boring at best, and during the ending sequence, the sound mixing was so bad I couldn't even hear what an NPC was saying to me. Then, before I knew it, the credits started to roll, and I had no idea what just happened. When something actually works properly in this game, it's this really incredible feeling, like the shocker might actually knock an enemy out for once, or you manage to successfully sneak past a group of zombies without being seen. But this is a game with so many issues and so many unfinished mechanics, and the fact that they're calling this a full release is ludicrous. What has this game got going for it? Well, I guess the sound design is pretty good, even though it's that old industrial, mechanical kind of grinding sounds, and that low frequency humming that you get in any horror game these days. The voice acting too is pretty solid as well, and it does have some moments that were genuinely frightening, I'm not gonna lie. But overall, Solarix is a terrible game. It fails as a stealth game, it fails as a first person shooter, and it fails as a horror game. It's frequently unfinished, buggy, sloppy, and unrefined. It has dated visuals, horrible controls, and half-baked mechanics. I'm not trying to be condescending, I'm really not, but I just can't think of a single good reason to recommend this game to anyone. And this is coming from the same guy who found a positive side to the Rambo video game. How they can justify selling this as a finished game is an insult to indie game developers, and to people who spend their hard-earned cash on this, I can only offer you my deepest condolences. But hey, don't fret, because they fooled me too.